Okay, last time we have solved the uh, equation of motion for a one-dimensional diatomic lattice and we found an optical branch and acoustical branch and especially we have carefully analyzed the behavior in the middle of the first brilliant zone and at the first brilliant zone boundaries. So um, what I would like to do is to try to gain more insights into the displacements uh, at these uh, two limits. So for this I recall the uh, the result that we obtain from the equation of motion when we substitute the traveling wave solution. So we had two equations minus n1 omega square u0 this was the displacement of the zeroth atom of type 1 is equal to c force constant v0 displacement of the second type atom uh, which is the zero to second type atom, 1 plus e to the minus ika minus 2c u0. And then we had another equation, minus m2 omega square v0 is c u0, 1 plus e to the plus ika minus 2c v0. And from these equations, if I uh, basically isolate u0 and v0, so if I take minus 2c u0 to the left hand side I obtain 2c minus m1 omega square u0 is equal to c v0 1 plus e to the minus ika and I could do the same thing for the second equation where I would obtain 2c minus m2 omega square v0 is c u0 1 plus e to the ika okay so from the first equation uh, when I have taken u0 to the left hand side uh, we can divide the, the left hand side with the right hand side so we obtain u0 over v0 is equal to c times 1 plus e to the minus ika divided by 2c minus m1 omega square. Now for the acoustical branch as k goes to 0 uh, the angular frequency goes to 0 so uh, if you substitute here k equals 0 and w equals uh, 0, you will obtain 2c divided by 2c, which will give us u0 equals v0. So the two kinds of atoms in the unit cell have the same amplitude and move in phase. As a matter of fact, the whole lattice moves as a rigid body. So first type atom, second type atom, they're moving with the same amplitude and same frequency. So the whole crystal lattice is moving so we have if you substitute k equals 0 for the displacement of the est atom u0 e to the minus i omega t and displacement of the est atom of type 2 v0 e to the minus i omega t and u0 and v0 are the same so the center of mass moves back and forth so all of these atoms type 1 and type 2 are moving uh, together um, now, as k increases, this relation is no longer satisfied, and especially if you look at the first brilliant zone boundary, uh, now we take this ratio u0 over v0 and substitute omega is equal to square root 2c over m1. Why? Because if you remember, that was our result for the acoustical branch at the first brilliant zone boundary. So if we substitute square root 2c over m1, uh, we find that 2c minus m1 omega square will become 0. So u0 over v0 is approaching infinity. So this physically means that uh, v0 is 0. Only type 2 atoms stay at rest, while type 1 atoms oscillate. So this is why at the first brilliant zone boundary, the angular frequency depends on m1 only. Now for the optical branch, uh, where we had square root 2c over mu at k equals 0 and square root 2c over m2 at k equals pi over a. Uh, if we substitute k goes to 0 limit, uh, then we will find 2c divided by 2c minus m1 omega square. So I substitute uh, k equals 0 here. So I, I obtain 1 plus 1, 2c divided by 2c minus m1 omega squared and for omega I substitute square 2c over mu uh, where 1 over mu effective mass is 1 over m1 plus 1 over m2 so 2c divided by 2c minus m1 omega square 2c 1 over m1 plus 1 over m2 
So two C's will cancel. I will have one divided by one minus uh, M1 times one over M1 plus one over M2. So this is going to give me uh, M1 over M1 gives me a minus one and minus M1 over M2. So one minus one will cancel and I will obtain minus M2 over M1. So what does that mean? This means that the two types of atoms in each cell move in opposite directions, pi out of phase, the center of mass will remain fixed. As K increases and W increases at the first Brillian zone boundary, we will find that U0 over V0 is uh, C1 plus E to the minus I pi uh, divided by 2C minus M1 omega squared for omega squared, we need to uh, substitute 2c over m2 here. So here is a mistake. So this should be 2c over m2. So uh, 1 plus e to the minus i pi. Cosine pi is minus 1. Sine pi is 0. 1 minus 1. So we are obtaining 0 here. So u0 is equal to 0. So atoms of type 1 are going to be stationary while atoms of type 2 will oscillate. So uh, we have looked at the two limits uh, for the acoustical branch and optical branch. Acoustical branch, we found that in the middle of the first brilliant zone boundary, the atoms are moving in phase with the same amplitude. The whole crystal moves, the center of mass moves back and forth. At the first brilliant zone boundary, on the other hand, we find that only type 2 atoms stay at rest. Type 1 atoms are oscillating. In the optical branch, we find that uh, for k equals to zero limit, the atoms are moving out of phase uh, and uh, they're in moving in opposite directions so that the center of mass remains fixed. As k increases and uh, it becomes pi over a at the first brilliant zone boundary, we find that type 1 atoms don't move, type 2 atoms are oscillating. That's why we have omega equals square root 2c over m2 at this limit for the optical branch. So sound waves are in the hertz to kilohertz range, so tens of kilohertz range. The typical values of uh, frequency is uh, 10 to 13 hertz or terahertz, uh, which is in the infrared region, 0.7 to 300 micrometers for optical branch. So we have quite a big difference in the frequency range for acoustical waves and uh, the infrared uh, oscillations. So we find that uh, in the optical branch, we have terahertz uh, frequencies. Now, if you look at some examples of displacements, uh, the first one is a transverse acoustic wave. You can see that the atoms are moving in phase. Uh, so type 1 and type 2 atoms are moving in phase with each other. So uh, you can see that uh, type 1 atom is moving up, type 2 atom is moving up, etc. And then when you go to the next uh, half of the wavelength, we, we see that they're moving, the neighboring atoms are moving in the same direction. So that's a transverse acoustic wave. However, if you have the neighboring atoms moving in opposite directions, this would be a transverse optical wave. So why is it transverse? Because the k-vector is uh, in this direction, but the displacements of the atoms are perpendicular to the k-vector. So this would be, because of the out-of-phase relationship, this would be a transverse optical wave. Now, if we look at the three-dimensional lattice, uh, so if we generalize to this three-dimensional lattice case, each normal mode is specified with a k-value. So in order to count the normal modes, we need to know how many k values we have in the first brilliant zone. So we have the task of counting the discrete values k can take in the first brilliant zone. So from, from born von Karman periodic boundary conditions, the displacements of the capital N atom and the zeroth atom were the same. So if you look at the zeroth atom, u0 e to the i k and a e to the minus i omega t, so that's the capital N atom. Zeroth atom, u0 e to the i0 e to the minus i omega t. e to the minus i omega t's will uh, cancel. And we will find that e to the i k and a must be equal to 1. So also u zeros cancel. So e to the i k and a equals 1. And uh, k and a is equal to plus or minus 
uh, 2 pi n where n is an integer. So k must be equal to plus or minus 2 pi n divided by capital N a. So k can be 0 plus or minus 2 pi over n a, 4 pi over n a, all the way up to the first Brillian zone boundary, which is pi over a. So uh, the maximum value that n can take, 2 pi n max over n a, is equal to pi over a. So that's the first Brillian zone boundary. So we find that the maximum value of n is capital N divided by 2. Uh, so N can take values from 0, uh, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, all the way up to plus minus capital N over 2. So how many values do we have here? Capital N over 2 times 2, because plus and minus are possible, plus 1, the 0th value, capital N plus 1 values. But when you look at k equals pi over a and k equals minus pi over a, they define the same state. That's the first Brillian zone boundary. So we can have n plus 1 minus 1, capital N, discrete k values for a one-dimensional lattice. So for the diatomic one-dimensional lattice, we have two branches, optical mode and uh, acoustical mode. So they, we, we will have for each mode capital N discrete values of k, so two n uh, modes. And... Uh, for each uh, branch, we need to consider the possibility that the wave uh, propagation direction and displacement of atoms are parallel, that will be longitudinal, or perpendicular in two different directions, x or z, if k is in parallel to y, that would give us two transverse directions. So we can count the total number of modes taking into account these directions as well. So if we apply this to three-dimensional monatomic Bravais lattice, so now we have the displacement vector a e to the i k dot r minus omega t. Now this a has become a vector because it can be uh, in any direction in three-dimensional space. So this a vector determines both the amplitude and direction of atomic vibrations. Therefore, it specifies the polarization. It could be longitudinal, it could be transverse, parallel to k or perpendicular to k. So uh, these are for the normal modes. So from the equation of motion, one obtains three coupled differential equations for ax, ay, and az. Uh, so... Uh, we have an equation like this and analogous to, so remember in the one-dimensional one case we had u0 and v0 uh, for the diatomic case. For mon monatomic case, for uh, one type of atom in the basis, we have this uh, coupled differential equation for three components of A. And uh, we can obtain a solution for omega and we will see that all of them are going to be acoustical. So analogous to the one-dimensional monatomic case, uh, here we also have only acoustical uh, mode. So uh, one of them is going to be longitudinal, two are transverse. So the, for example, for aluminum, you can see here, k along 110 direction, you have a dispersion relation like this, omega versus k. And for the k along 100 direction, we see that transverse, two transverse acoustical modes are the same, so we have degeneracy. So since the crystal is anisotropic, dispersion relations have to be specified for all directions. So as you can see here, uh, the dispersion relation changes depending on the crystal direction. And frequency contours can be plotted in k space, so if you take into account uh, all possible directions. Along high symmetry directions, like 100 in aluminum, uh, the waves may be classified as pure longitudinal or pure, pure transverse, while along other directions they may have a mixed character. Okay, so if you look at a three-dimensional non-breve lattice, if you obtain a three-dimensional non-breve lattice as soon as you assign a basis with more than one atom to the lattice. So we have two or more atoms in the primitive cell. So let's say that we have p atoms in the basis. From the equation of motion, there will be three p branches of the dispersion relation. So for the one-dimensional case, when we had two atoms in the basis, we had two branches. For three-dimensional case, we will have three p branches. So if it's a diatomic lattice, uh, but three-dimensional, you will have six branches. 
So out of these, three are then going to be, three of them are going to be acoustical and 3P minus 3 optical branches. So for a diatomic case, we would have three acoustical and three optical branches and always two transverse and one longitudinal. So if you look at a three-dimensional diatomic lattice where P is equal to 2, there is 3P, 3 times 2, 6 branches, 3 acoustical, 3 optical. So you can see that we will have if, if the if k direction is not in a highly symmetric direction, um, one longitudinal, two transverse uh, this modes for optical and acoustic cases, so six in total. So um, in the diatomic one-dimensional case, we had one acoustical and one optical. So omega versus k, omega uh, of k, this that's the dispersion relation, is invariant under symmetry operations of the point group of the crystal. So if you're looking at uh, a symmetric situation uh, in the crystal, um, we will find the same omega versus k relationship. For a high symmetry direction, as we have seen, the transverse acoustical modes can be degenerate. Okay, so... Uh, We've talked about the uh, displacements uh, in the uh, two um, diatomic um, one-dimensional uh, lattice. We have found that uh, as k goes to zero, omega goes to zero, in the acoustical branch, the crystal moves as a whole back and forth. Uh, when we have the first brilliant zone boundary, type 2 atoms stay at rest. For the, acoustic, for the optical branch, as k goes to zero, the uh, the two types of atoms are moving out of phase uh, with each other so that the center of mass remains fixed. At the first brilliant zone boundary, we find that type 2 atoms move, type 1 atoms don't move. And uh, they have typical frequency ranges, hertz to kilohertz for sound waves and terahertz for optical modes. Now, uh, we have seen that if you look at a transverse wave, if you find that the atoms are moving in the same direction as the wave propagates, this would be a transverse acoustical mode. If they're moving out of phase, for instance, this would be a transverse optical uh, mode. When we go to the three-dimensional lattice, we have to count the number of uh, distinct k values and we have found that we have capital and discrete k values for a one-dimensional lattice and uh, if we have a uh, diatomic one-dimensional lattice, since we have optical and um, acoustic branches, we will have two capital N modes. For the three-dimensional lattice, uh, we generalize the displacement with u vector is equal to a vector e to the i k dot r minus omega t, where a vector determines the polarization being either longitudinal, a parallel to k, or transverse, perpendicular to k. And when we solve this uh, equation of motion uh, for the monatomic case, for example, we find uh, three possibilities for the longitudinal polarization and two transverse polarizations, uh, three types of acoustical modes. So acoustical mode is omega goes to zero as k goes to zero. And depending on the uh, symmetry properties of the uh, direction, we might, we might have uh, two uh, different transverse modes overlapping with each other. And uh, also this omega versus k relationship is invariant under symmetry operations in the crystal. For a three-dimensional non-Brave lattice where we have a basis with p atoms, we have total 3p branches, three, three of them acoustical, 3p minus 3 optical, and for uh, three acoustical branches, one longitudinal, two transverse, and for 3p minus 3 optical branches, again we will have uh, one of them longitudinal uh, and uh, for the diatomic case, for example, you'll have one longitudinal and two transverse optical uh, branches. So we, we always have to consider uh, the um, longitudinal and two transverse polarizations. Okay, so uh, that's basically what I would like to say about uh, lattice vibrations. In the next video, we will start talking about um, vibrations, uh, analyzing these vibrations uh, in the picture of quasi-particles called phonons.